My name is Daphne Broadhurst. I'm a nurse, a clinical specialist with medical pharmacies and OMS. I'm going to show you how to remove a pick in the safety and comfort of a patient's home. Be sure to follow your own organization's policy. The protocol that I'm going to be using is one that was developed in collaboration with various nursing agencies in the community. I'm going to start with showing you how to actually remove the pick and then we'll go over some of the practice consideration points that you need to keep in mind when you're doing this procedure. This protocol follows a local guideline and is intended as a guide only. You must take into consideration patient factors such as allergies, conditions, as well as local policies. You need to assess the appropriateness of the removal for your patient, such as the treatment is completed. Consider if there's any contraindications for removal in the home. Be aware of your organization's contraindications, such as those seen on the screen. First, you need to prepare your patient. You will, of course, have introduced yourself to your patient when you entered into his or her home. So I want to make sure that I explained it well. Can you explain to me what I'm going to be doing? Um, you're going to um, uh, remove and clean my, uh, the skin, or remove the bench and then clean the, the skin around the, this, um, and then you're going to, I guess, pull it out slowly and uh, uh, make sure it doesn't get stuck. <laughs> right. Super. So do you know other questions? So, so you're okay with me going ahead and doing this? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. You can ask the patient to put a warm, not hot towel on the arm with the pick prior to your arrival to promote venous dilation and reduce irritation during the pick removal. They may also take a warm shower just before you arrive. Thank you, Patrick, for putting that warm towel on your arm before I got here, because that helped to warm up your veins, so that makes it easy to, to slide on out. Um, I've already removed your dressing, so now we're ready to clean your arm and get going with this. You need to wash your hands, clean your work surface. Now prepare your supplies aseptically. You need clean gloves, sterile gloves, sterile two by twos, your cleansing solution, we use chlorhexidine 2% with alcohol swab sticks. You need a transparent dressing. And in our region, we use a tourniquet or BP cuff in case the pick severs during removal. In another region, they have a disposable plastic clamp at hand in case of catheter fracture. If your pick is sutured in, you'll need a suture removal kit or scissors if the patient has a subcutaneous securement device and a towel or sterile drape to place under the arm. Position your patient. It's preferable that you ask the patient to lie in a supine position, although this isn't always feasible. You can ask them, in that case, to sit up. Make sure they're comfortable. Okay, so Patrick, I'm just gonna put this tourniquet under your arm, just in case I have any difficulty later on. We're not gonna use it. I'm just gonna set it there loosely, and I have a towel on on, on uh, the chair. Is your arm comfortable? I put a pillow there to make it yeah. better for you. Yeah, more good. Okay, great. <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna wash my hands. If there were any infusions, you would stop and disconnect any infusions. You'll notice that I didn't engage the tourniquet. This is just a safety measure in case there's an inadvertent catheter fracture. You could put the tourniquet on to hopefully prevent that catheter from embolizing forward to the heart. So you have it in place, but it's not engaged. Okay, so we have the dressing off already. So I'm going to clean your skin. Don clean gloves. So Patrick, can you turn your head to the other side just so that you're not breathing any germs on the pick site? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to clean your skin. It's going to feel a little bit cool, this cleansing solution. You doing okay? Yep, yeah, all good. Now we just have to let this chlorhexidine dry. And I'm going to change my gloves now. Wash your hands 
and Dawn Sterile Gloves. Note, if the patient had any sutures or subcutaneous securement device, such as a secure cap, I would remove them as per manufacturer guidelines at this point. Okay, Patrick, so your skin is nice and clean. I've got my sterile gloves on. We're about ready to take your pick out. It's going to slide on out nice and easily. But I just want, at one point, when I'm almost finished removing it, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and hum. Can you try that for me right now? Big breath in and hum. <laughs> great, that's great. And don't breathe in when you're doing your humming, okay? So let's go ahead and get this done. Hold a sterile gauze in your non-dominant hand above the exit site, not touching the site. Grasp the catheter with your dominant hand at the insertion site. And then gently pull it out. You can tell them that it's like you're pulling on just a long piece of spaghetti that you're gently going to pull out. Gently pull the catheter straight out, parallel to the skin in approximately two and a half centimeter increments. Each dot represents one centimeter. Returning the hand to the exit site with each pull to allow more control. A slow removal reduces the risk for venous spasm. Don't apply pressure over the site or the vein during removal as it can encourage the catheter to touch the wall of the vein and create venous spasm. And note that rapid removal may also cause venous spasm and pain. If resistance is encountered when you're attempting to remove the catheter, pause, let the patient and the vein relax and then re-attempt. Never pull against resistance. When 10 centimeters is seen, you're near the end of the pick. So I'm just about at the end. It's sliding out beautifully. Can you just take a big breath in and hum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the pick is out, went beautifully, no problems. Right. I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, pressure here just to make sure that there's, if there's any bleeding that it stops, but it doesn't look like there's any bleeding. Usually there isn't. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes to, uh, to get this to seal over. So Patrick, I'm just going to show you your pick. So this is the entire pick that was inside you. And what we're looking for, we want to make sure that it all came out as one. So I'm just going to check the length of your pick. So this is a pick and we just need to make look at the end. It's nice and flat, it's not jagged, which tells us that it didn't break. And I'm just going to check the, the length. On the catheter, there's a dot every centimeter, and then there's a measurement. And your full catheter length was 52 centimeters, and it's 51.2. So we got the full catheter, and that's the way it should be. If the catheter is a Groshan pick, ensure the round black tip on the end of the catheter is intact. The catheter length may not be required if you have a Groshan pick. Okay, so Patrick, I have your uh, the pick site all covered up. Okay. So what I want you to do, Patrick, is just keep this dressing on for another day or two, just okay. until the skin really seals over and protects the site. Okay. And then you can take that off. If it doesn't look like, if it looks like there's still a little bit of open, you can just put a little bandage on it until it does completely, the skin grows over it. So Patrick, your pick is out. Congratulations. I'm sure this is a happy moment for you. About time. <laughs> I'm sure it is. So I'm going to ask you to lay here for about 30 minutes uh, just to allow this to complete, to really start to heal over. Then tomorrow you can peel this dressing off in, in, or the next day if you want and just clean it with soap and water. If you'd like to put a small bandage over it, you can. And usually you don't need to though as the skin grows uh, quickly over the opening. You can shower, but we ask you not to take a bath because we don't want your arm in the water for a about a week until that skin has really healed. While it's healing, if your shirt is rubbing on it and it's sore and you haven't put a bandage on, then you can put a bandage over it if, if the rubbing is hurting your arm. 
If you start to have any difficulty breathing, if you get short of breath, or your arm gets sore or red or swollen, or if it starts to bleed, I want you to call your nurse or your doctor. If, if you're having, it's really hard to breathe, then you should go to emergency or call 911. Okay. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Good, excellent. Now Patrick, I wanna make sure I did a good job explaining to you what you need to do to take, take care of this. So what will you do over the next few days with this? So now I'm just gonna clean up. Discard your equipment appropriately. Wash your hands. Now you need to document the date, the time, the procedure, your site assessment, the position of the patient, if hemostasis was achieved, any difficulties encountered and related interventions. Document the length of the catheter and the condition of the catheter tip. Any specimens obtained and of course the patient response. Now let's review some of the problems and corrective actions that you can take. Vein spasm or a stuck pick. Removing the pick may cause a vein to spasm and this is why we do a gentle removal. Other causes of a stuck pick may include phlebitis, thrombosis, fibrin formation, knotting of the catheter, or malposition of the catheter. If this happens and you're meeting resistance, just pause the procedure, cover the catheter with the dressing, and apply a warm compress. Or you can ask the patient to have a warm drink. Anxiety can cause the vein to constrict, so try to help your patient relax if they seem nervous. You can try distraction techniques. After the heat application, repeat the procedure to try and remove the pick. If, however, it continues to be stuck, don't pull against resistance. Stop, clean the site, cover the exposed catheter with a sterile dressing, and call the vascular access team or the prescriber for assessment. It could be that there's a thrombosis or fibrin sheath hanging onto the catheter. Remember, never pull against resistance as you can actually cause the catheter to break, particularly if it's silicone, and embolize towards the heart. Catheter fracture. If the length of the catheter is shorter than the original, the catheter may have severed or broken during removal. If there's still part of the pick visible, put a clamp on the catheter to prevent it from embolizing internally. Continue with the removal. If the catheter has severed and it's not visible as the catheter is advanced internally, you can immediately tighten the tourniquet proximal to the insertion site, but ensure that you have the radial and ulnar pulses present. Or put the BP cuff on the arm. Place the patient on his left side, making sure he stays lying down. These actions are designed to prevent the catheter fragment from embolizing to the heart and pulmonary artery. Activate emergency services. This is an emergency situation. Stay with your patient. If the pick length after removal is less than the pick length upon insertion, send the patient to emergency department with the pick and a note. If the tip appears jagged or you suspect a fractured pick, put the catheter in a plastic bag if it appears defective and send it to the vascular access program for examination. Bleeding. Patients with very low platelets may have prolonged bleeding. You may need to apply pressure longer and consider the use of a dressing with hemostatic and or absorptive properties. Air embolism. Air embolism is a very rare but potentially catastrophic complication of a central line removal. It can result in dysrhythmias, cardiac arrest, and stroke. This is an emergent situation. Turn the patient on the left side and activate emergency measures if you suspect an air embolism. Signs and symptoms may include respiratory distress, chest pain, hypotension, tachycardia, confusion, and, and or changes in level of consciousness. And this concludes our video. Thank you, Patrick, for your help in demonstrating this video. Medical pharmacies and OMS are committed to patients' health and well-being. We hope this video helps you to learn how to remove picks in the comfort of a patient's home so they don't have to go into the hospital to have their pick removed. Thank you.